What is going on everyone? My name is Andy. Welcome back to another FPL video. Today it's team selection time for game week four. So as always, going to take you back through how I did in game week three, look ahead to game week four, transfers, captaincy, that kind of thing. And game week three was pretty brutal for a lot of people. There was wild cards played that haven't gone well at all. Obviously wild cards are not just for one week. But it was an interesting and testing week. So we're going to talk about it in just a sec. Before we do that, let's talk about OneFootball. So OneFootball are going to continue sponsoring the team selection videos for a little while longer, which is great. Really appreciate their support. It's only going to help me grow this channel more and more. So if you haven't already checked it out, there is a handy link in the description below that will take you straight through to the Android iOS store. It's a completely free app, so you might as well give it a go. And thanks to everyone that's messaged me to say how much they're enjoying using it as well. If you haven't already download it let me know what you think it's always good to hear feedback and i'm glad that we've put something on the channel that people are enjoying and of course it's a football app you're an fpl manager it's the kind of thing you need team news lineup news all your goal scoring uh, notifications and all that good stuff so hit that link below give it a go and let me know what you think so game week three what a very very strange week 47 points for me that was actually a green arrow. Now, it's only taken me just inside the top million, 996,000. So I'm averaging 58 points a week. But obviously, that first game is really pulling that number up. Not been good the last two weeks. But I got 47 points without taking a hit, without using my wild card. So I'm pretty happy about that. I have suffered some kind of price drops for players that I might want to bring in. You know, they've gone up in price, players I'm holding have gone down in price but that's going to happen over the course of the season i can't react to every single price change so pretty happy how things are so far 176 points total really happy in particular with because the thing is what i said last week about wildcarding was for my team not saying that everyone at wildcard had made a mistake but for my team there was players that i knew i'd want to take out on wildcard that maybe would score me points that week one luca dean six points one mccarthy six points one che adams five points now a bit frustrating that we've gone three games with no Che Adams goal. But next week is looking pretty good. And I still don't want to get rid of him. I still don't want to get rid of McCarthy. Trent Alexander-Arnold coming in. I mean, how Arsenal scored, I don't even know. There was a couple of good um, passes. There was one from Ceballos late on, which Lacazette should have done better. But the one they actually scored from was just a big mistake from Robertson. You just don't see that very often from them. So the fact they conceded, a little bit unlucky maybe. But again, we know what these guys are like. Attacking returns from the fullbacks. Trent gets an assist and three bonus points. Robertson scores, uh, and I think he got two bonus points as well. So really good from them, even though I only own Trent. Maybe in the future, I'll look to own both. Luke Shaw, very frustrating. Look, Man United have not started well at all. Big credit to Brighton, the way they played. So just a one point for him. Sice, zero points against West Ham. What the hell happened there, by the way? A little bit worried about him, which I'll talk about in a minute. Maybe that's just a freak result. I don't know. I don't want to react too heavily to just single results and single games because we saw how well Wolves played in the second half against City. So an interesting one. Calvin Lewin doing the business again. Werner missed out again on points. Really worried about him at the moment. But again, I'll talk about him in a sec. And Salah captain did pull through. Did score more than Kevin De Bruyne, but just a single assist. Never really clicked for him last night. Never really fell for him to score a goal. But hopefully we can get some more going forward. Mane, by the way. Looked awesome. Let's see how we're looking for game week four. So one free transfer this week, 100.3 million squad value, 0.5 in the bank. And we're in this situation now where I'm not 100% sure about the exact changes I want to make, which kind of makes me think about saving a transfer, especially with the international break. Now, having two free transfers over that can be handy. Although I do think it's overplayed sometimes because one of the reasons for injuries and stuff, but you've got price rise and stuff, you don't want to necessarily go early with your transfers anyway. So you're still wait, waiting nearly two weeks to make your transfers. So if you're worried about price changes and stuff, two free transfers doesn't really make a difference. But of course, when it comes to injuries and stuff, it will. So I look at this defense. And on paper, it looks really good. I'll come on to Luke Shaw in a minute because obviously he is the anomaly here. But McCarthy against West Brom at home. Southampton's shown they can actually keep clean sheets. I'm still not confident of them going forward. But for West Brom at home, there's got to be a good chance. I know they scored a few goals so far this season, but uh, I'm not expecting that to continue. I think Southampton at home could definitely get a result there. Luca Dean as well. Really happy with him. Very, very attacking. Frustrating to not have got a clean sheet from him yet. And to be fair, Brian at home is going to be a tough ask as well. But got confidence. And even if not, he's still there for the attacking returns. A bit like Trent and Robertson. So really happy with him. Trent Alexander-Arnold, obviously staying. I'd love to add Robertson there as well. Maybe when I eventually wildcard, whenever that might be, I probably will look at double Liverpool defence. They've started off really well. Yes, they conceded against Arsenal. It was a little bit unlucky. Again, though, another mistake. We saw Van Dijk make a mistake against Leeds as well. But going forward, you'd expect them to address that. And obviously, they've really hit the ground running, right? 
They beat Leeds. They've just beaten um, uh, Arsenal last night as well. Nearly forgot who they played. And the fixtures are only going to get better and better as well. So expecting good things there. But right now, I've only got Trent. Now, let's talk about the other two defenders. Sice. Am I worried about him? A little bit. Not enough to just get rid of him because I need to see him actually get dropped. But he was not good again against West Ham. To be fair, Antonio kind of bullied all the defenders. Bolly, Cody and Sice. But Sice in particular was not good. Now, part of the problem could be the Vinagre is playing and he's not been good either. He's not really been providing much cover down the left for Sice because Sice does play as the left centre-back. So maybe when Marcel is back, that will help. There is some talk about Marcel coming in at left centre-back, Sice being dropped and Vinagre playing, but I just, I'm not convinced that's going to happen enough to warrant taking him out. And Fulham at home is a good fixture. Obviously, they've got Mitrovic, but... And he does take a lot of shots in the box, Mitrovic, but they're not usually high-quality chances. A lot of them are headers, which aren't as good as, you know, standard shots, etc. Um, so I'm pretty happy with Sice against Fulham at home. And the fixtures for Wolves are good. I'm going to put that West Ham game down to a freak result. Obviously, if it keeps happening, you know, for the next one or two game weeks, then maybe I'll change my mind. But there's absolutely no reason to take Sice out ahead of Wolves. And then Luke Shaw... Not the ideal player I want to play this week. So Maximin's still injured. He might be back. We'll have to wait and see what Steve Bruce says. He's got Burnley at home. And I didn't really want to play Shaw against Spurs, especially with how Man United have started. But could I see a situation where Mourinho kind of comes and maybe parks the bus and Solskjaer gets a result at home? And Shaw does okay. Now Son's injured. He's not going to be playing for this game, we think, as well. So obviously they've got Kane, but Bale might not be fit either. So their attack looks a little bit uh, different. I, I just wonder, could Man United get a result there? Is it worth spending a transfer? If I was going to make a transfer, I've got 0.5 in the bank. So I can go up to Reese James. I could get Chilwell in. He's surely going to start soon for Chelsea, given the way Alonso played in the last game. And obviously Lampard even called him out on it. But Chelsea are conceding so many goals. And I'm, I, I think going forward, they're going to be fine. But it's just when is that going to happen? When are they going to have everyone fit, right? They keep making changes to that team. Alonso's in, and Azpilicueta comes on. Chilwell plays in the cup. Mendy's not in yet. You know, Zuma's starting, then it's Christiansen starting next to Thiago Silva. He's made a mistake, and it's just a little bit all over the place for the Chelsea at the moment. I feel like it needs to settle, and so maybe it's not worth making that, that change this week to get Reese James. It is a good fixture, Crystal Palace at home, but part of me is just thinking, keep sure, go for the two free transfers over the international break, and then reassess. Potentially even do a mini wildcard. Three transfers for minus four. That's something that's on my mind. So adding in the midfield. Same as last week of course. Kevin De Bruyne, Salah and Rodriguez. Now I see people flip-flopping a bit on Rodriguez. He's blanked and then he's got 12 points. And then he's blanked. Could he get 12 points again? I still think he's a really good option. I'm really happy with him. Ultimately he is a bit of a placeholder for me. Like I'm not looking to move him on anytime soon. But Harvey Barnes could come in instead. Greenwood at some point if he shows a little bit more. And Man United in general show a little bit more. And when the transfer window is closed, just in case we get Sancho, even though that's looking less and less likely. But also, because I've got St. Maximin and Shaw, I've got two players that at some point I could downgrade because I don't need both of them. I've got quite a bit of cash spread out. So St. Maximin, if I want to continue with 4-3-3. For example, if I bought in Reese James, I'd still have 0.4 in the bank. I could sell St. Maximin to another 4.5 million midfielder, still play 4-3-3, but have like an extra uh, million or so to spend as well. So that could then put Rodriguez up to Pulisic when he's finally fit. Maybe I'll go to Havertz. Whatever it might be, when Chelsea start clicking, there's options there. Uh, so Rodriguez is a really nice option, I still think. But also, he's a nice placeholder too. So for now, he's going to hopefully keep ticking over. Like, he's creating so many chances. Okay, it'd be better if he was on set pieces. It'd be even better if he was on penalties. But it looks like that's not the case with Charleston's on them. But still a decent option. Salah and De Bruyne. Like, what happened to Man City? I don't know against Leicester. It was just so weird. They were so good in that first half against Wolves. But I guess it goes to show what can happen in any given game. Am I suddenly going to write Man City off? Absolutely not. To be fair, I kind of said this a bit last week, Leicester's defence is actually quite good. Even without Ndidi, of course that's not as good as having him. I get that. But the defence is pretty good. It was pretty good for the whole of last year. Um, and it still continues to be. Now, they did still concede two goals, of course. But when you put in five past Man City, uh, you're doing something right. But obviously, I'm expecting Man City to bounce back against Leeds. Um, it's going to be a toughish game, but... The way Leeds play, Man City are going to be able to kind of break them apart, I think, uh, on the counter especially. But even just playing through them, I just expect there with De Bruyne there, Sterling Foden, it's just going to happen. The one thing that worries me a little bit with Man City is they've not got a proper number nine. They've not got Jesus, they've not got Aguero, they've not been linked with anyone. Sterling can play there, Foden can play there, De Bruyne can play there, Mahrez could probably play there as well. But I don't think it's ideal, right? I've said this so many times before, even when Jesus and Aguero are fit, when one of them's fit, 
they pretty much always play. Very rare Pep actually plays a false nine or someone else in that number nine position. For good reason, right? You do want a proper... Uh, striker in there obviously it works a little bit for Liverpool for example because of the way they play but for Man City I don't know you just want Jesus or Aguero in there and I do worry if that'll hurt them going forward but Leicester was a tricky fixture like I've just said and they have got easier fixtures coming up so I'm happy with De Bruyne but my captain is currently on Salah for pretty much the same reasons as last week Last week, I wasn't convinced the lesser defence was any worse than Arsenal's. I think that showed. Arsenal gave up quite a few chances. Okay, Salah didn't score on that week, but it doesn't mean it couldn't have happened uh, on another game. And ultimately, from open play, I'm still saying Salah more likely to score than Kevin De Bruyne. Simple as that. And then people will say, well, Kevin De Bruyne's got penalties. And I will say, well, so has Salah, right? So they're pretty even in that. And I expect Salah's got more chance of scoring from open goal. Mane looked very good, by the way, but... On the first game, Salah looked brilliant and Mane didn't look good. So it can change quite quickly depending on the defences they're up against. Villa's defence, two clean sheets so far. Sheffield United, where they, where they should have scored, by the way. Um, and last night they played Fulham. They've not really been tested yet. I appreciate the back end of last season. They looked really good. But again, very small sample size considering the rest of the season they were awful. So I'm not ready to write or put down Villa as an ultimate defence that you shouldn't back players up against. So Salah or De Bruyne for me for captaincy again this week. And I'm going to go for the guy that I think is going to be more likely to score from open play. That also has penalties. Uh, and Kevin De Bruyne could do really well against Leeds. But for me, it's going to be Salah again. Uh, and I'm pretty happy with that decision, I think. And I don't think it's going to change. So putting the forwards in now, Werner, Calvert-Lewin and Adams. Let's start with Adams really quickly. Surely he is going to score against West Brom at home. I'm not saying I need to hold him long term. But that guy better get me a goal this week before I start to think about potentially moving him on at some point. He's been playing really well. Hasn't Hootel must be pretty happy with him. I know Ings is more clinical. I know he's going to score more goals. I know he's on penalties. But he also costs 2.5 million more. So I'm hoping for 5.9 million, which is what Che Adams is now. He can still get something. The guy's been so unlucky. He didn't really have too many chances against Burnley, to be fair. Um, but again, he could, there was one chance I remember where he could have scored. It's just, I don't know, it's a frustrating one. But I'm keeping the faith in him. And no way am I going to Bamford. No way. I'm going to continue to ignore Bamford. He can go up and up and up in price. I just don't think he can keep it up. So I'm staying with Che Adams. I could be wrong. Uh, but, I mean, this week is West Brom at home, so it's almost a no-brainer. Calvert-Lewin obviously stays. Five goals now in three games. Absolutely ridiculous how good he's been. Can he keep up that? No. But is he still going to be a great pick over the course of the season? Absolutely. Could he get to 15 to 20 goals this year? I don't think it's out of the question. Ings did it last year. Uh, you'd say Cavaloon's in a slightly better team, especially with that midfield now. We'll have to see how that goes over the next kind of 10, 15 games to really get an idea. Uh, but Cavaloon, yeah, just because he scored five and three, can he keep that up? Probably not. But can he keep scoring goals? He's got the fixtures, so why not? So happy to keep him, of course. He's, up, he's gone up to 7.4 million now. Absolutely ridiculous. And then Werner, Crystal Palace at home. Him and Shaw are the biggest what-to-dos this week, right? Am I happy with Werner? Absolutely not. Chelsea just changing things all over the place, right? I've said this on a few other videos. He played central in the first game. He played left in the second game. And obviously, when they went down to 10 men, he was kind of everywhere, just chasing shadows, basically. And then against West Brom, he started on the left. But then he moved to the right in the second half because they brought Hudson and Doy on. And it just hasn't clicked. But he had such a good chance in that West Brom game. Had he put that away, would people still be looking to take him out before Crystal Palace at home and Southampton at home? No. My worry is that Ziyech and Pulisic are still going to be missing out this week. They've then got the international break to recover. We don't know 100% if they're going to be back. Lampard keeps saying nearly there. I mean, he said that every single week. And we're now four game weeks into the season. So it doesn't look like it's happening this week, I'd say. But we'll have to wait and see. And if they're not in the team, I just worry about the amount, of ch the amount of changes that Lampard is making in that team week to week. He didn't really do that last season. Once he was happy with a set of players, they just kept playing. But it's just not clicking for them. To be fair, they were probably a little bit unlucky to concede the three goals in the way they did. Uh, and obviously, they then went on to score three goals anyway. So it's good that they're scoring goals. They scored three in the first game as well. But nothing for Werner that so far from six goals outside of an assist. Obviously a little bit unlucky that Jorginho didn't convert the penalty in the Liverpool game. And then had he put that chance away, uh, away against West Brom, then suddenly that's three returns in three. And obviously you can talk about what-if moments all the time. You know, what if Mitrovic had put a hat-trick against Villa or whatever. Um, but there's signs there that he could get something. But if he doesn't against Crystal Palace, this is my biggest worry. If he gets nothing against Palace... 
He's going to drop in price maybe once or twice on the international break. And I'm not going to want to make early transfers because anything can happen in the international break. I'm going to want to wait till the end. And then he could be like 9.3, 9.2 million. And I lost 0.3. And I'll still be thinking about keeping him ahead of Southampton, which could be good. I just don't know whether it's worth saving a free transfer. If I change him out, it'll probably be to Jimenez. The fixtures are so good. I'm definitely not put off by that West Ham game. Starting with Fulham next, fixtures are brilliant for the next four games. Plenty of goals for him. And that would also give me a bit more money as well. It would give me, I think, an extra 0.8. So 1.3 million in the bank. And I could just bank that for a rainy day or use it this week potentially. But I don't think there's anything else I'd really want to do with it other than potentially doing St. Maxim into Foden for a four-point hit. So I'd have Foden and Jimenez instead of Werner and St. Maxim. And I could just bench Luke Shaw and play 3-4-3. That's in the back of my head because I do think Man City are going to bounce back against Leeds. But... Part of me is just thinking, hold on to Werner. Surely he's going to come good. We've seen last year he's a little bit of a streaky player at times. Could he go on a bit of a run now? I don't know. So let me know in the comments below, what are you doing with Werner? I'm siding with keeping at the moment, but that four-point hit is in the back of my mind. So that's it for this one. Thanks once again to OneFootball for sponsoring the video. If you've not already checked it out, link in the description below. You can just click that and it'll take you straight through to download. If you've enjoyed the video, please do give it a like. Subscribe if you're new around here as well. I'm trying to hit that 125k by the end of the season, which would be awesome. And lastly, shout out to the Patreon. So thanks to everybody that signed up through Patreon. There is a link in the description below, patreon.com slash let's talk FPL. This is everybody that signed up so far. Obviously, anyone that signs up gets up on the wall. A big thanks to Andrew F who has signed up since the last video slash stream as well. So thanks to everyone that signed up to Patreon. There's podcasts there. So all the videos converted to podcasts, Slack access. Uh, whatsapp access extra content all that kind of good stuff so if you want to check it out link in the description below otherwise i'll leave it there i'll be back tomorrow for the game week preview so make sure you hit that notification bell so you know when that's going live and i will see you soon Peace.